Hello, I'm Stuart from Archeon, and I'm here to talk about the importance of high performance ventilation during CPR. For the last 20 years, the focus has been on the cardio part of CPR, primarily chest compressions. And while this is of course of critical importance, recent studies have shown that the quality of ventilations has a major impact on survival rate and neurological outcomes in cardiac arrest patients. With the EOLife ventilation feedback device, we are now able to address this imbalance and enable caregivers to perform high performance and guideline compliant ventilations. So, let me show you how EOLife allows you to put the P back in CPR. The first factor in delivering high performance ventilations is managing tidal volumes. Not too high to avoid hyperventilation and not too low to avoid hypoventilation. But what exactly is tidal volume? During CPR, when you squeeze the bag to provide air to your patient, the volume of air created at the outlet of the bag is called the insufflated volume. The air continues its pathway through the airway. Here, a mask is represented. If the seal is not adequate between the mask and the patient's face, some of the air leaks away before it reaches the upper airways of the patient. It's the first point of potential leakage. Leakage can also occur with a laryngeal mask or an endotracheal tube if the cuff is not correctly inflated or positioned. If this happens, then some of the air ends up in the stomach. This is called gastric insufflation and can result in regurgitation of stomach contents and aspiration of these contents into the lungs. A high proportion of patients in whom aspiration has occurred will develop pneumonia. Finally, the rest of the air will go through the trachea and enter the lungs. The volume of air effectively reaching the lungs is therefore smaller than the inspired volume and is called the tidal volume or VT. After inflating the lung, when the pressure on the bag is released, the expiratory phase begins. The recoil of the rib cage and lungs forces inspired air out of the mouth and nose and with further potential loss of volume around the mask. The volume of air passing by the expiratory valve of the bag is called expiratory volume or VE. When it comes to ventilation, the tidal volume is the key parameter to monitor. Indeed, it represents the effective volume of air reaching the lungs at each insufflation, which enables oxygenation of the blood and CO2 removal. Recent studies have shown the importance of effective tidal volumes on survival and neurological outcomes. Idris et al. showed on approximately 2,000 patients that a sufficient tidal volume triples the chance of survival and quadruples the number of patients discharged from hospital with good neurological outcomes. You will find the references at the end of the video. During manual ventilation, you need to rely on a device that can provide reliable estimations of tidal volume, and EOLife is the only device currently available that can do this. Now that we understand the importance of controlling leaks during ventilation to achieve a good tidal volume, let's see how EOLife can help. When it comes to manual ventilation, leakage management is the most important challenge, accounting for 60% of the reasons why a good tidal volume is not achieved. Let's now see how EOLife can help control leaks. So, I've connected a bag to an EOLife device and I've connected the EOLife to a test lung. So this is a closed loop with minimal or no dead space. So when I start to ventilate, and I'll just give two or three breaths. If we now review the results on screen, we have an inspiratory volume and a tidal volume that is exactly the same. And that proves how accurate the eel life is in being able to display tidal volume. Okay, so I'm now going to connect a filter into the line and that will add some dead space into the circuit. 
So when I now ventilate, and I'll just give it a couple of ventilations, what I now see is a difference between the inspired volume and the tidal volume. And that difference is around nine or 10 mils. And finally, I'm going to open up this little valve here on the filter, and that will simulate a significant leakage. And this is something we see routinely in bag valve mask ventilation. So when I ventilate this time, we'll now see a significant difference between the inspired volume and the tidal volume. And just roughly, we're looking at about 500 mil of inspiratory volume and around 200 mil of tidal volume. And that is why it is so critically important to measure tidal volume, because that's the true reflection of the volume going into the patient's lungs. We've just seen how far the tidal volume can be from the insufflated volume. As the quantity of air reaching the lungs is influenced by various parameters, including leaks, dead space, and airway resistance. Monitoring insufflated volume alone cannot guarantee a good ventilation. We've seen how important leakage management is to avoiding hypoventilation. But hyperventilation is also a significant problem when the bag is squeezed too hard. This is true for mask-based ventilation and has the potential to becoming increasingly problematic as we progress to supraglottic airways and then to endotracheal tube intubation. Some companies have tried to reduce hyperventilation by reducing the size of the bags. I will show you why using small bags is not a good idea. Small bags have the advantage of limiting the maximal insufflated volume and therefore reducing the amount of air reaching the lungs. This logically would reduce the risk of barotrauma. On the other hand, if leaks are not managed well, the tidal volume can be extremely low. So, limiting insufflated volume can lead to hypoventilation, which is proven to be harmful for patients. You will find the references at the end of the video. Okay, so I've, I'm using a small bag to ventilate this patient. I've got the EOLIFE connected, uh, and I'm trying to maintain as good a mask sleeve as I can. Uh, so when I fully squeeze the bag, um, you'll see I'm achieving an inspiratory volume of around 400, 410, uh, but my tidal volume is about 380. Uh, so that's pretty good in terms of ability to, to keep a mask seal with a one-handed uh, technique here. Um, but what you'll notice is that volume, tidal volume falls well short uh, of a patient which should be around 500, maybe 500 to 600 mils tidal volume. We just showed how hard it is to reach the recommendations in terms of tidal volume with a small bag. EOLIFE enables you to use an adult bag by controlling the tidal volume without generating hyperventilation. Hypoventilation is not the only risk of small bags. Indeed, when the guidelines recommend to use the highest feasible oxygen concentration during CPR, small bags have real troubles to guarantee a correct FiO2. Indeed, a recent study showed that small bags struggle to exceed 60% of FiO2. Due to the small size of the bag reservoir, it must be completely emptied with each ventilation. Consequently, the bag cannot refill with oxygen quickly enough between ventilation cycles. The problem is wider than just small bags. This study showed that only a few resuscitation bags, including Ambu and Lairdal, guarantee an FiO2 higher than 80%. A recent study from Dr. Snyder showed that using small bags on adult patients decreased ROSC from 40 to 33%. You will find the references at the end of the video. By using EOLIFE, you ensure that your patient receives an adequate tidal volume without impairing oxygenation and survival. If you can't use small bags to prevent hyperventilation, there are other devices that limit insufflated pressure to reduce the risk of barotrauma. We talk a lot about limiting inspiratory pressure or peak pressure to limit the risk of barotrauma and lung injuries. But does this really matter? To answer this question, 
we need to understand the differences between inspiratory pressure and lung pressure, which is also called intrathoracic pressure, and how different they can be. When you squeeze the bag to provide air to your patient, you create a positive pressure on the outlet of the bag. This pressure is called inspiratory pressure. Air passing through the respiratory system will encounter resistance due to the narrowing of the airways. This resistance can be amplified by secretions, edema, or respiratory pathologies such as COPD and asthma. To overcome this resistance, the air will lose some of its initial pressure before reaching the lung. The remaining pressure, called lung pressure, will inflate the lungs and generate a tidal volume. This lung pressure is directly linked to the tidal volume and is responsible for ventilation-induced lung injuries, such as barotrauma. The lung pressure and the inspiratory pressure are therefore not equal. Indeed, part of the original pressure is used to overcome the airway resistance. The higher the resistance, the lower the lung pressure. It is therefore impossible to estimate lung pressure based on inspiratory pressure and as a result can lead to a major risk of hypoventilation. This is why the AHA and ERC guidelines for CPR do not recommend to limit the inspiratory pressure, but rather to control the tidal volume. Some manual resuscitators can provide inspiratory pressure measurements thanks to a manometer connected to the outlet of the bag or directly limit the inspiratory pressure with a pop-off valve. While it can be beneficial to limit gastric inflation, it presents a very high risk of hypoventilation when the airway resistance is high. This is always the case in cardiac arrest patients because of the chest compressions slowly closing the airway and generating more and more resistance over time. We're using a bag that has a manometer, as you can see on the bag itself, and we've connected our ear life. So we can now see the differences and in interplay between these two devices. Our patient here, we've intubated. They have an amount of air airway resistance, which is typical of cardiac arrest patients. But as I ventilate, we're really getting up to the very high levels of um, the peak inspiratory pressure into the red zone on the manometer. If we forget ELI for a second and just really base our ventilations on the manometer, if we just ventilate so we're in the green zone or at the very end of the green zone going into yellow, we're only actually achieving about 130 uh, mils of inspiratory volume uh, and no tidal volume. So that kind of just shows you that the manometer on here is really not giving you the information in respect of what we're introducing into the patient's lungs and how important it is to measure tidal volume. So um, I'm now gonna focus really on trying to get the tidal volume uh, where it needs to be for this patient. Uh, so I'm having to exert more force than I would normally do. And you can see that reflected in the manometer here. And yet we're, on, we're still only achieving a tidal volume of around 260 uh, mils. Uh, and when you look at the lungs, the lungs uh, are correspondingly not really inflating in the way they should be. So this is just a great example of uh, the manometer not really giving us the information we need. And the information we need is uh, the tidal volume, how much volume is going into the lung. We're now trying to ventilate this patient and we've disconnected the pop-up valve, uh, which is set to 40 centimetres of water. Uh, which obviously is a safety feature to prevent barotrauma and hyperventilation for this patient. Uh, so as I, I try and ventilate, uh, I'm reaching pressures, as you'll see on the manometer, right at the top end, which is blowing through the pop-off valve. But I'm only delivering around 200 um, uh, mils of tidal volume, which is clearly insufficient. So even observing the manometer, I'm creating... Uh, pressures that I wouldn't go to if I was just following the manometer, but I'm just not being able to ventilate this patient effectively. EOLIFE is the only medical device that effectively deals with all of the challenges discussed in this video. It allows for a precise management of leaks, thereby preventing hypoventilation, and accurately measures tidal volume, thereby preventing hyperventilation. EOLIFE brings the P 
back to the centre of CPR and is a much needed advance in ventilation management. It is now time to improve manual ventilation quality and make a difference with EOLIFE. <laughs>